Thank you. Thank you very much for introduction. So, um, this talk will be actually related to the previous talk and to several talks before. So, it's all about uh, haplotyping. So, we will see now how that relates to haplotyping. Um, okay, just ah, here. Uh, first of all, I will talk about RNA viruses. So, you will see that the same method can be applied to some other, like to NGA study. We will see how it's applied. But uh, the originally, how it appears, the problem is like this. So, let's say we have a an RNA virus, and this is the standard RNA viruses, which like have the same structures, quasi species, are uh, hepa he hepatitis C virus and uh, um, NHAV virus. So there are other viruses, like influenza viruses. Practically all RNA viruses have that trouble that they have just single strand, and that's why when they replicate each other, they have a lot of mutations. And because they have a lot of mutations, what's happened, they don't have any mechanism to correct them. So as a result, if mutations is not that bad or maybe even beneficial, then they will stay together. And uh, here you can see the picture uh, of these viruses, how they stand together. It's like as a phylogenetic tree of them. That actually allows a lot of interesting things to be done with these such viruses. But of course, the first, we need to find those variants. And uh, there are several possibilities how to do it. So we, we are talking mostly uh, now about, uh, about Illumina or Park Bioreads. That's what uh, we use. Uh, this, this reads we analyze. And um, the problem can be formulated as follows, like mathematically speaking or statistically, is the following. So given a reference genome, maybe it's unknown, but it's actually really that not that important, but some people make it important a lot. Okay, and a uh, set of reads. And possibly, maybe also given a low bound in the frequency of the haplotype. So, so uh, set of reads. And what we want, so the, all these reads are drawn from a population of different variants. And these variants may be as close as one or two SNPs away from each other or from reference. So they may be really very close. And uh, so basically, it's the same as we want to identify repeats or from the previous talk if we want to identify genes. And what we want, we want to find a set of haplotypes as well as with their frequency together, such that they will maximize the probability of seeing the reads that we've seen given that set of haplotypes H. So we, we are posing it as, as like that problem. So there are many tools on that. Uh, we had uh, maybe uh, like the pioneering work with all the tools like by Zagordi et al. from Birwinkel Group, it's a Shora. Then we had Vispa at the same time. Then uh, we have some other tools. Uh, okay, this is Prosperian Salemi, and this is uh, our other tools. And recently there are many tools. For example, last year it was presented here, I think, Savage. Uh, Haploclick was a little bit earlier. To SNV we had in 2016. Recently we found some tool at Recomp. It was presented. Predict Hapla is one of the tools which found, we found the most, the, 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 the best closest to us. Okay, we are still better. Okay, we will talk about these tools. And this uh, tool of ours that I will discuss, it's Click SNV, which is kind of generalization of 2SNV. 2SNV was only applicable to, uh, to Pug Bioreads, and this is applicable also to, uh, to MySeq or to, uh, to other reasons. So first of all, what is the main idea of this 2SNV, which we'll then generalize in this uh, paper. So the main idea is very, very simple. So if we have aligned all reads or all, all variants together, or all reads together, then what we will see, we will see that if, uh, say, two minor alleles are very frequently with each other, this means that it's something wrong. They're not supposed to be each other if these are errors. So we want to distinguish errors from real haplotypes. So, so how to do this? And uh, so I just once then proved very weird theorem, which I just don't have any shorter proof. It was a proof like uh, two pages of some stupid multiplication and addition. And we will see very weird stuff from there. So uh, from the troop, that the following thing, that's the theory. 
So basically, if um, if uh, this these two, two two minor release don't go together, if there is no haplotype, so how many haplotypes may we have? Either we have let's say two alleles, one and two. So we have number of haplotypes one one, number of haplotypes two two, number of haplotypes one two and two one. And if the expected number of one one times expected number of two two is less than expected, uh, uh, sorry, if uh, true number of haplotypes two two is zero, then we always will have such inequality. Okay, and of course. It still may be fluctuation. We may put a p-value on that. Is it true or not? And that's what we did. So based on this expression, so the product of these two should be less than this if e to two is equal to zero. Sorry, t to two is equal to zero. Okay? And then we can compute simply observed number one, two, two, one, one, one. And then based on these observed numbers, we can decide if exists or not a haplotype containing two minor reliefs. So as soon as we're done with that, uh, the two SNV method was like clustering is doing something kind of very slow, and but it it was actually success because we were able to find uh, imagine that the error rate of pack buyer is sometimes okay it's sometimes they claim 15 but of course in our case it wasn't that large maybe two three percent but still we were able to identify correctly haplotypes with a frequency 0.2%. So it's much, much less, and it, we were able to do this. Okay. Then, uh, what, is, what is in click SNV? The problem is that we, of course, thought a lot how to, uh, how to actually use, instead of pack by reads, which alone and cover the entire region, almost entire region, uh, we, how to use uh, illuminaries, which are short, like 50 or 100 or 200 long, Pair reads or something like that. So how to use them? And uh, we came up with this method, which actually works pretty well uh, on data we will see. So how to do this? So first of all, we just uh, put vertices on alleles. Each, vertex is, if each allele is a vertex possible, and connect two vertices if our test says that most likely there exists a haplotype containing these two alleles. And then after that, we construct a click graph. So in other words, get all clicks in this, in this graph. Each click kind of supposedly correspond to some, uh, some variant, some haplotype. So we construct click graphs. And then the problem is that because uh, uh, if, if it is packed by read, it's no problem at all. At that moment, we will stop and we will get very good results. So we improve accuracy even twice more. So in other words, we were able to identify all 10 uh, haplotypes without any false, negative, uh, false positives, no false negatives, no false positives, and went to 0.01% uh, variant. But the problem uh, is that uh, if you go to illuminaries, the problem is that some pairs of SNPs, we, if they are far away or not in a good, good distance uh, between them, they will never be in the same read. So we'll not be able to collect any information, and then we need to fantasize sometimes, okay? And then when we do fantasizing, so we may connect pairs of SNPs, which are not really, no, no evidence, like direct at least, indirect may exist, but direct evidence doesn't exist that they should be in the same couple of them. So what we do that after that, we, we decided, okay, let's also identify the such pairs of SNPs which should not be in the same couple of them. So, if all evidence tell that most likely there are no haplotypes. So we put forbidden pairs and then match connected graph. It's an interesting and fee complete problem inside. And then we find consensus haplotype, estimate maximum likelihood, and we're done. So I will just show approximately how it's done. So let's say we have the following uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven alleles. And, the, and we put an edge between two alleles if uh, they are linked. So we know that these two guys are linked, that's why we put an H. 
Uh, about this, we don't know. It's possible that they're not linked, but it's possible that they're simply too far away and there is no evidence to tell if they're, uh, if they're supposed to be connected or not. So then we identify clicks. These are the clicks in this graph. So, and then we start trying to merge these clicks. But before merging, so in other words, uh, for each click we put a vertex. We have one, two, three, four clicks. So as a result, we will get a click graph. And this, these are now uh, clicks. And we want to understand uh, which, uh, which clicks should be merged together, which are not. Uh, in general, clicks are kind of difficult to find, but uh, then when the graph is co comparatively sparse, our graph is sparse, why? Because really, all these variants, say for example, a quasi-species or genes is a previous, they are very similar to each other, like one, two, three, okay, up to maybe 20 uh, SNPs difference it's like small percentage. So that's why we don't expect so many clicks and we can find them all. Then after that, in this click graph, we identify pairs of clicks that should not be connected. Why? Because we see that between, the, there is at least one uh, in this click and in this click there is one allele, the pair of alleles, and this pair of alleles exhibit for sure no correlation at all. So in other words, they are not supposed to be in a, in, in, in a, in a single variant. So we, we say, okay, we put edge between them and this edge like dashed edge, and this will be forbidden pair. So we can, uh, connect, we can collapse clicks, vertices in a single click, but we, we are forbidden to collapse these two guys. So as a result, what we'll see, uh, we will connect basically how we solve this problem. We just connect all pairs of of uh, clicks which are not forbidden, and then find the maximum connected subgraph. So it is one maximum connected subgraph, that's another maximum connected subgraph, that's the third maximum connected subgraph. And all, this con all these four types will be our, these are the clicks which will correspond to our output haplotypes. Okay, so now I just explain you the method. So we have these two, two, two new methods, some approximate algorithm, how to solve it. Actually, exact algorithm, but exponential in general, but working for all kind of purposes that we need. Now, the next uh, contribution of, of, our, of our paper, we haven't yet published, we can find this paper uh, on BioArchive. The next thing is how to measure the quality. So it's actually long going, if you've seen like maybe there are 10 stools. Basically, right now, we know it is that, that every year, right, three or four tools appear for this problem, if not more now, okay? So, for example, maybe five years ago, not so frequently, but now every year appears a tool. So we decided to pick up some people with whom we compare. It's kind of was difficult to compare with all appearing tools. So the one which was published in 2018, in 2017, Recom, we took one paper, okay, ABSQR, and, uh, and, some, and some others, okay. And the question is now, uh, how to measure the quality, sensitivity, how many you recover, specificity, what portion of whatever you recover is wrong. Uh, and then the question is that not only you need to recover the, the variant, but also you need to say something good, something closely related to, to reality about the frequency of the variant. So, and this what is standard to use, this callback labor or symmetrized Jensen-Shannon divergence, but all this stuff from our point of view, I mean, at least from my point of view, was very counterintuitive. And also, even this sensitivity specificity is, is a little bit of a strange thing. So, okay, some people, some, some tools, produce 100 guys, while in reality 10. So what is it? We should punish it forever, or uh, what? I mean, like, but they say for those rare, they say they are rare, okay, so how to do this? So what we suggested to use Earth Movers Distance, and that's, we believe, is the best for these purposes. So what is it is doing? It takes into account simultaneously how far the, the variance, which is real, and what you produce, how far they are from each other, and also their frequency. So basically, each uh, variant um, with its frequency corresponds to, uh, predicted variant corresponds, say, to a pile of dirt, and uh, the, 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 the true one, say, corresponds to a hole of, this, of, of correct volume. And that's what we need to do. You need to move this dirt and put that in a hole, 
and their work, which is, of course, it's a, it's a number of mismatches between real variants and, and predicted variants. That's work, that's what counted the quality. And it's nice because it's one number. Okay, so that's what we suggest to use. And uh, what kind of benchmark? So it's always a trouble when you do this on simulated data because uh, people know anything. You can, you can produce your simulated data according to your model. It will be the best in the world, okay, whatever. You can come up with a model that you like, and it will be the best. So it's kind of very difficult. So that's why people try as much as possible to go to the real data. So this is our one real data. Of course, it's, no, it's real to a certain extent. So we are trying right now to do benchmarking paper about that. What is it ex to, to a certain extent? because it is like more community. Why more community? We really don't know what is in real in fact. So should, for example, the, 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 the frequency of variance that in reality should follow the, say, geometric progression or not, but this follows. So in other words, it goes uh, uh, from like 50%, 25%, 20.5%, and so on, so on, so on. And there were 10 of them, so the last one will be one of 1,000, and obviously it's 0.01%. And these are, this, this, this is, the length is 2K, and this was real pack by reads. So when we originally worked on that, so our collaborators from UCLA just gave us reads, and we didn't know what we were doing, so what the results, and we were supposed to come up and say, okay, we work, 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 like one, like we can get one more. This is one. They say, yes, okay, so we were encouraged. So, but at the end, uh, it was false positive. But now when we did click SNV instead of 2SNV, we did all 10, all right, no problem, but we already knew the answer in advance. So then there is another one. So what we did, we simulated MySeq from the same data, just to be sure, from the same data. Then we simula uh, simulated HAV data. It's just ours, but, but we didn't take our simulator. And the last one is, it, it, this is real data, a reduced lab mix. Why reduced? Because the real data contain the entire 10,000 long HAV uh, uh, guys, and for many reasons, we will never be able to wait so long to get the results for other tools. Okay, so what we did, we just reduced it to one fragment. We are collaborating on that with um, um, CDC uh, lab on HAV, and this 1.3 kilobase uh, region, the most interesting for them because it it's actually contains all these all this, uh, drug-resistant mutations. And divergence here, it's you not know, how much they far how far they are from each other. Okay, so now we need to finish. Okay, uh, so what we got, so now just very explaining results. So the first is EMD to the consensus. So for example, in this data, in this data, in this data, this is, this is the, basically the distance from all variants to the consensus. So the larger the number, the more difficult to reconstruct that instance. Then how many variants are here? Uh, present in this, uh, how many true positives we found. So we, for example, click and we found all one exactly. For this case, uh, it finds three out of five, seven out of seven, seven out of seven we found correctly. So for this, for this uh, kind of data. So uh, Torsten, we found nine, and the closest to us competitor was pretty Hapla. And in, in certain case, IBSQR. So this IBSQR uh, was c claiming that, okay, we are doing Really, the guys which are so original pieces, uh, variants should be very close to each other. And they're very, and when they are very close to each other in this particular case, they really were able to beat pretty Hapla. But we are still much better on that. And the last thing, what I wanted to add it, this is the pointers to our tool and to, to our paper. What we did, we now did new applications just to imputation of for low pass and JS sequencing. So we just take low pass and gen sequencing, and our low pass is really low pass. So it's just below one coverage. And we tried a couple of tools. Okay, with one tool we did best comparison, and the result was like that. So what we really did, we really compare each, we, we, we view each person, whatever, with the known values, this sequence of uh, the, the, the length genotype, we viewed it as a read. And then compute statistics and get this, basically without any, differ, uh, without any deviation, just apply click SNVs inside. So as a result, what we've got, we've got, so if coverage, for example, 0.6 coverage, 
we, were, we, we compare it with Beagle, and there is like faster version, slow version of Beagle, uh, and we improve approximately by 10%, the, pre the prediction gets better. Uh, that's it, and, and the, the end I just want to say who was working with me, this, it's a Georgia State group, uh, Pavel Skum's professor new here, and some students who already graduated, some of them, HEV division, and also we collaborate with Lo Laboratory of Bioinformatics from Itmo University. Thanks a lot. We use all. Use all so that yeah, it's happened to be. It's not so many, actually. It's happened to be not so many, but uh, if the original input, is the, the, like people or whatever, very far away, then it's a trouble. It may happen. But usually, they are re they're really close to each other. So we were able to do this. Yeah. OK, not so many. We're able to count. <laughs>